dad was a jazz musician. My mum was into opera and jazz. And so, uh, you know, I was, I was brought up on essentially Pink Floyd, uh, Weather Report, Herbie Hancock. Um, you know, it was all that sort of something a bit edgy and quirky, but I'd never heard a synthesizer. And so I, I, I remember just hearing what I now know to be a Hoover. Um, and I, I just heard this big Hoover horn go And I just remember going, what the hell is that? And just being blown away by this one sound um, because I couldn't work it out. I knew it wasn't a piano. I was 10 years old at the time. Um, and I knew it wasn't a piano or a violin or a trumpet, and I just couldn't fathom what this sound was. Um, and that was the first moment where I got into sound design, synthesis, music production, everything. That was the sort of the moment where everything just fell into place for me, and I've been striving to do it ever since. <laughs> Decam um, is in pretty much everything I do, or at least strobe is. Um, I use Amber a lot for pads, um, and actually a lot of the top line synths as well. I, I, I tend to, if I want something that's sort of a, a trailing melodic pattern, um, I just find Amber's really good for that because you can just modulate everything basically, and it, it just comes out with strange new sounds. Um, Whereas strobe, I find, is just a real sort of go-to monster, basically. Um, you can just dive straight into strobe and straight out of the box you've got big sounds. Um, and that's something that's quite hard to come by and things like the sub oscillator and stuff um, just really sort of makes it stand out from the others, I think. <laughs> Um, if I want a particular kind of kick drum or a snare that that is somewhat different or something I don't have in a loops pack or you know because I have my own my own stock ones that I've built up over y years um, particularly with snare drums um, but sometimes I get quite fussy over a snare drum and quite often I'll, I'll start producing a track and there's just no snare drum that I own that really sort of hits the, the the nail on the head um, so tremor can be handy for that because I can just go right well I'll make my own I think the most played album at the moment is M83 I think yeah which is not like my music at all it's dreamy music but I just love it so much and it's so inspirational um, everything from the actual creative musicality of it is stunning um, right through to the, the mix and the master and the, the just the sound that oozes out of your speakers it's just it's like liquid music um, yeah and I, I think I, I get quite inspired by that from odd chord changes and odd chord progressions and things and sometimes I can sort of apply that to my own music um, and I actually try never happens but I, I try not to ever take inspiration from something that's in my own genre really. DJing is more like the reward of a producer basically um, you know having slaved for weeks on end in a studio on a particular track or something and then to finally actually get to see a, a crowd's reaction to it um, that's really the reward for for all the hard work that you put into the studio um, as for downsides, I mean, essentially you're asking for downsides of the job. Um, I'm not sure there are any. I think if, if I said anything that annoyed me, I'd be seen as ungrateful because, let's face it, I've got the best geek job in the world. Um, yeah, I don't think I could ask for much more. <laughs>